Welcome to ForexTV.com. Today is Tuesday, July 14th. I'm Tim Kelly with the New York Forex Market Buzz. Dollar is trading higher against the euro and yen, but weaker against the British pound. U.S. equity markets are fluctuating between gains and losses. Crude oil and gold futures are higher, and the yield on the U.S. 10-year Treasury note is 3.44%, up 9 basis points. Treasuries fell for a second day today as sales at U.S. retailers rose more than expected in June, adding to signs that the steepest recession in 50 years may be easing and the crimping and crimping demand for relative uh, safety of government debt. 10- and 30-year securities paired losses as the, the uh, Standard & Poor's 500 index, which yesterday rose the most in six weeks, fluctuated between gains and losses. Prices paid to U.S. producers rose in June by twice as much as forecast. U.S. Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner said uh, today the world economy is on a, quote, gradual path to recovery. Today we're joined by Jim Hirecheck of the P Pattern Price and Time Report. Jim, welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Tim. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, Jim. Uh, you know, it's, these days it's always a struggle to figure out where things are going, and that's why I call you. So uh, <laughs> maybe you could give us your insight. Um, you know, seeing a lot of bouncing around from day to day. You look at a daily chart, you see day up, day down, maybe two days down and a day up. Jim, tell us what you think is going on. Well, I think uh, as, a, as a chart reader and, and maybe the guy who doesn't rely on indicators and uh, moving averages, as a guy who actually looks at the... Uh, open high low close data I think I, I have a little bit of an advantage lately because this market is uh, all these markets have basically been in inside ranges whether it's the S&P or the foreign currency markets uh, they seem to be following uh, simple swing charts uh, I think the guy was using maybe a trend indicator or some kind of like moving average as I mentioned it's probably getting chopped but what I'm looking at is is a market that's uh, for example in the euro uh, you know, the series of lower tops and lower bottoms is uh, giving me indications that, you know, this market wants to move lower, uh, and it's also uh, being restricted by retracement points up above. Hey, Jim, uh, Jim, are, are we yeah. talking about the S&P right now? Uh, we're talking about the euro. Uh, uh, about the uh, euro, okay. And it, well, the S&P uh, would, uh, would be a good example also because, uh, that market came down, uh, you know, we had the highs earlier in June, came down to lows last week, and uh, now we're back up into retracement areas uh, in the 909 area, 912 area. And so we're going through this uh, process of this uh, backing and filling, but uh, it seems to me that there's a, a series of these lower tops and lower bottoms, and that's giving me an indication that these markets want to roll to the downside. And, and if you want to look at the, the story behind it, it's really just a matter of uh, how traders are looking at risk these days. And so I can put the uh, euro and the S&P, for example, in the same type of model. If you're looking for risk, you're going long in these markets. If you're a little shy of risk, you're, you're backing away. Um, but I think you have to be a little bit skilled to, to read the charts to uh, take advantage of it. If you are trying to use automatic... Uh, uh, trading uh, systems, as I said, or trend-following indicators, I think that you're getting chopped up. And I think you need to, uh, this is one time where GAN analysis or just conventional chart and pattern reading has an edge over uh, computerized type trading. Okay. Hey, Jim, what, what are your thoughts on, uh, let, let's shift gears here. I want to I cover uh, the, the majors today, or a few of them. Um, and uh, maybe you could tell us your thoughts on uh, dollar yen at this point. We started to see a little bit of movement there as well. Well, in the dollar yen, uh, what you're looking at there, is, as I mentioned uh, with the euro, uh, it's a risk-related market. If you are getting uh, the declines in the stock market, you are uh, looking at a, a weaker um, a dollar against the yen. Uh, traders, uh, there's a lot of investors coming out of Japan who are just not happy with the returns they get there because basically they don't get anything. And so they, they are looking for better return when uh, the stock market shows signs that it's ready to uh, turn upward. Otherwise, uh, you, have, uh, you, you have a situation where if you do get a, um, 
a uh, stronger uh, stock market, you'll get a you'll get a stronger dollar as these investors try to put money back in the stock market. I'm looking at a uh, downtrend right now in the uh, dollar yen. Uh, we are at a retracement point around this uh, 92.57 area, uh, but again, we have a series of these uh, lower tops and lower bottoms, uh, which is indicating that this market uh, is probably likely to continue to work lower. And uh, I would, I'd look for maybe if you can get a, a two, three-day rally to sell, uh, it would be a gift. To sell into a, yen, a dollar yen rally. Yes. Okay. Uh, what do you think about sterling at this point? Well, that market uh, was uh, the biggest surprise all year. I had expected uh, with the fundamentals that I had been reading and uh, looking at some of the chart patterns that we had uh, finished uh, or not even rallied in the spring. Um, but it, none, nonetheless, it did, and the trend indicator was up for several months from late April to early June. But since June, uh, we've had, again, a series of lower tops. A uh, little break in the last uh, seven to ten days or so uh, turned the trend down, and I think this market's ready to roll. If we can cross the uh, 158 area, we probably could drop down to the 150 area. You should retrace 50% of this March to uh, July rally. Uh, that's just a normal pattern. And fundamentally, uh, they're running into a lot of problems. Uh, one is uh, that they're not going to have the money in the budget to provide another stimulus package if they need it. And also there's talk that uh, the uh, Bank of England may uh, apply some more of this quantitative easing, uh, and that's going to uh, hurt the market too. So I'm uh, pretty bearish on the pound at this point. Okay, Jim, thanks. Hey, Jim, something we've started, uh, I know you're participating in, is uh, Forex TV Connect, forextvconnect.com. It allows our viewers to get in touch with you directly. Um, why, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, pattern price and, and time at this point. Tell uh, uh, our viewers right now what they can expect if they ask you questions. And uh, as, as always, you can always uh, through uh, uh, Forex TV Connect, can start a relationship with you directly. But tell us a little bit about what you do, Jim, and, and, and what you give to traders. Well, I started out as a GAN analyst, and it it put me in a, painted me in a corner as uh, many people around the world uh, thought that I had some kind of secrets or mysteries of GAN. So what I started to do is when I researched GAN's materials, I just broke it into three categories. And I said he uses pattern, he uses price, and uses time to uh, analyze and to pull the trigger on trades. And then I started to categorize uh, conventional uh, indicators and charting packages uh, that are on the internet or, or available through software packages. And I started to see the same thing, that traders were either trading patterns such as candlestick or they were trading uh, pattern and price with moving averages or they were using price for pivots and then only seasonals for timing. And I saw that as uh, uh, the traders were becoming, uh, at least that I talked to, were becoming uncomfortable or missing pieces. So I've tried to put together a website and some analysis that combines all three so that if a trader is looking at a market, he can trade off of the price and the pattern, or he can wait for setups that combine all three indicators. I think it gives you a distinctive uh, edge because once I identify these points uh, to the day trader, all he has to do is watch the flow to see if the uh, order is coming in are confirming that a certain area is support and resistance. So the day traders that I work with in the uh, uh, euro dollar and also in the S&P uh, really like it because I, I can try to identify points for them and also time periods when these points are likely to get hit. And then all they have to do is focus on the flow at that time uh, and to see whether they want to take a buy or sell at that point. Great. Hey, Jim, thanks for sharing that. Again, uh, if you'd like to ask Jim some questions directly, start a relationship with Jim, uh, you're free to do so on Forex TV Connect. Jim, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Tim. This has been your New York Forex Market Buzz with Jim Hirecheck of the Pattern, Price, and Time Report. I'm Tim Kelly. Join us later this afternoon for PM Exchange right here on ForexTV.com.